guys welcome back to my channel so today's video I'm gonna be telling you guys some growth hair tips that have really really worked for me to help me get from this to this in a matter of six months now let me tell you guys I have been natural my whole life but my hair journey has been far 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 from perfect as a matter of fact it's still not perfect but these are some tips that I have seen significant results from so I'm here to share those tips with you guys also since you're already here subscribe join the family stay a while okay while you're at it like this video and comment down below what are some things that you use what are some things that you've seen significant results from let me know down below but while we're at it let's get into it okay so first things first is genetics we all know that we all grow hair at a different rate right and so some people may say yeah Ashley but like your hair may grow you know six inches in a year you know 12 inches in a year and mine may grow maybe three inches in a year whatever the case may be your hair is growing at the end of the day your hair is growing so the difference is after we acknowledge that is to say okay now that i know that hair grows at a different rate is not to one compare your hair growth rate to mine or to anyone else's but to realize like at the end of the day your hair is growing and it's less about the growth and more about retaining the length because at the end of the day even if your hair grows faster than mine if i'm retaining my length and i'm preventing breakage then my hair has the potential to get to the length that i so desire so that's number one just getting that disclaimer out of the way so the next important thing to realize is that he obviously is the very thing that can damage your hair the most we all love to do different hairstyles it's one of the things that i love most about you know curly hair is that it can be curly in its prime and then at the same rate you can straighten it and have a different hairstyle and I love that and the versatility of it but at the same time you know straightening hair can obviously be very damaging if you're not using heat protectant if you're doing it too often and just if you're constantly frying your hair it's just doing more harm than it is good and so at the end of the day diminishing heat is very imperative to your hair growth i know for me growing up as a little girl i never really had to, uh, applied heat to my hair only on special occasions like for easter and for birthdays and that's literally the only time that i would straighten my hair but as i got older and you know thought i was cute started doing my hair by myself you know first mistake i did was purchase a uh, flat iron and i'll be flat not flat ironing my hair every day before school thinking that i'm super cute that i need my hair to be straight blend in with this sewing i mean it's it, it was bad <laughs> so that's another reason why I, you know, am so cautious about using less heat and straightening my hair less often. You know, even as I got older in college, I used to still straighten my hair once a month and realizing that my hair never grew. Like, it didn't break off, but it didn't grow. So that's something that I really just want to reiterate that diminishing heat is very important at this point in time frame in my life I'm just straightening my hair once every three to four months and even then I feel like I should cut back so I'm still working on that as well now this next tip is something that nobody wants to hear nobody wants to do it you know I know it is just even hard for me to even get it out of my mouth because I didn't even want to do it myself and if you have damage cut it off I swear to you that if I show you pictures from when I was younger or just even before I ended up cutting my hair in the image that I showed in the beginning of this video, my hair was that same length for at least a year or two. And then once I cut it to this, literally six months later, I had this. And so my point is, girl, listen I'm talking to you also talking to myself because I literally did not want to cut off my hair I was the one that was just like uh-uh like you need to cut off this much or don't cut it at all or I'll do it next time and what you don't realize is that by not cutting off your dead ends you are doing so much damage than good I feel like even by explaining to you about how bad split ends are about how bad it can break your hair literally I feel like you may know that 
You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like some of the information that we hear, we know it already and it's just hard for us to do. So let me tell you this. I'm gonna repeat it again that split ends are horrible because at the end of the day, when your hair is growing, by the time it gets to the split end, it breaks off anyway. So there's, yeah, like, oh my gosh, my hair is growing at the root. But by the time it gets to the end, sis, it's gone, okay? And then as your hair is splitting up the hair shaft, literally it is, you know, making your hair weaker and weaker and weaker and it's preventing it from growing. So if you cut off that dead end, I promise you, you will see your hair growing and not even because it's growing faster, but it's not breaking off. You know what I'm saying? And so people don't get that analogy sometimes. And so they're really just like, no girl, my hair is growing. You don't need to trim it. You're gonna cut off. Sis, if your ends are already dead, it doesn't matter how much growth you have up here. It's... <laughs> it's gone by the time it gets to the end. So the next important thing, obviously we all know, is to moisturize. If you wake up every morning and you put lotion on your face, on your arm, I don't know why some people forget about their scalp. Your scalp, the moisture in your scalp is so important. And sometimes we leave it for dead, you know? We leave it dry, we leave it flaky, we forget to massage it. And, and the oil for me, I think, is the meat and the potatoes as to why my hair grew. So this is the oil. Oops. This is the oil that I've been using. It is called Wild Growth Hair Oil. Okay. So let me tell you why this oil is the only oil. I'm not getting paid for this. Okay. I'm... <laughs> okay i just want to make that clear so this oil is so good you can find it at any local beauty supply shop and you can find it on amazon i'll leave the link down below make sure you check it out it's only about like seven dollars and the reason why i like it is because it's all natural there's nothing in here that you can't pronounce there's coconut oil olive oil there's um right uh rice water in here there's pomegranate rose hip lavender peppermint oil chickpea sesame frankincense i mean this i from the moment that she cut off my hair and from the moment that i straightened it six months after the fact this was the only oil that i used and so this is why i'm so convinced that it works i'm not the only one that says this there's multiple videos on this platform that is saying the same thing this oil is magic because it's all natural things like it's all natural things and it's just all in one bottle and I swear by this and I'm not going to stray from it and this is what I continue to use to this day before I even started recording this video I put this oil in my hair so I, I really 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 uh suggest that you find an oil that works for you it doesn't have to be this one some people like um you know jojoba some people like lavender some people like whatever but my my point is if you're focusing on growth then you need to get the oils for that there's oil for moisture there's oil for for um you know specifically for your scalp there's oils for different things and i feel like the oils specifically for growth are all in this bottle and the ones that um the art that stand out to me the most is rice water or rice bran and lavender and peppermint oil so if i was you <laughs> i would get the oil so the next thing that helps me on my hair growth journey was protective styles now i think a lot of people sleep on protective styles because maybe they're just not sure you know what really works for them but for me wigs are my go-to you know like across my platform of social media on instagram youtube you see me in a multitude of wigs so much so that i feel like sometimes you know people think like oh because you wear wigs like you don't have hair underneath and that's very far from the truth it's just because me as some of you may already know yes i'm a nursing student but i also model on the side and so just being in that industry it can be very harsh on your hair and you know for someone like me that has natural hair not everybody knows how to take care of it and it's just very it could be damaging when you go to a photo shoot on monday and then they need your hair straight and then you go to another one on wednesday and they need it curly and then you go to another one and they need it this way and they need it in hairspray i'm like listen 
do this to my wig but don't do it to my natural hair okay so i think that's really why i got into wigs and you know your hair really grows the best when you leave it alone i just leave it alone i want i nourish it under the wig and just because you have a wig or a sew-in i mean i prefer wigs more than sew-ins because you know sew-ins kind of can stunt your growth if it's too tight or tugging on it but with a wig don't forget to nourish your hair under the wig as well like still oil your scalp on it daily it's very important but besides that i genuinely do love wigs when i'm not wearing wigs i think it's important to you know maybe have your hair in like braids but be careful of those braids if you can do knotless it's better um be careful on the braids that tug on your edges and and are too tight braids aren't my favorite style to go to because the weight can be heavy and um personally i just don't see it as um benefit for me it definitely is benefit for others and it's just that i i haven't tried knotless yet so i'm excited to do that so i want to try knotless because i don't like the tension on my head and i just feel like um you know it's more susceptible to breakage when you do braids too often um, and so that's just for me, but I do suggest that you find a protective style that works for you, whether it's buns, braids, twists, I think it's like really, really important to find that, that style that works for you. So my next tip to you guys is vitamins and water. Now I know you're probably looking at me like, girl, duh, like <laughs> I drink water every day. But my question is, do you really, like for me, I'm not a water person. I never was like... I used to have to put stuff in my water to drink it and I know it sounds bad. I'm not like that now because I've definitely changed but before you could not it was juice lemonade I was not I'm not a water person you know even now I'm still not a water person but I still force myself to drink water and I've implemented vitamins into my daily routine and let me explain why it's not just because oh you know I feel like people tell you to take vitamins and drink water but they don't really explain the reason and the science behind it if you're lacking in vitamin c if you're lacking in water then your hair is the last to get any of that why would why would your body want to give nutrients to your hair and scalp when your liver needs more vitamins hello like why would your body want to send you know extra nutrients and blood flow to your hair when when your stomach is not where it needs to be your heart's not where it needs to be i mean there are other <laughs> important vital things in your body that needs more nutrients however if you are nourishing your body with the vitamins and the the water and just all of the things that it needs then it's like oh okay we good like your hair i see you hair let me let me let me give you some love now like i hope that makes sense so that's why it is so imperative it's so important to be to drink your water to to eat healthier because when you when you love on your body and love on yourself it really does manifest not only in your hair but in your skin and your nails and it's 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 a proven fact okay that's why i say drink your water sis drink your water so you know i just really feel like all of these things sound so simple and easy and you're probably saying like girl like yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm trying that and and i don't see any growth or i see this and it's easy for you to say no 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 all hair grows that's a fact all hair grows at the end of the day the most important tip that i can tell you is to be patient because it's i don't know sometimes i feel like some of these youtube videos are misleading and they're saying like yeah you know um use this oil yeah use this oil today and tomorrow your hair's gonna be down to your butt <laughs> it's not gonna happen and if they're telling you that, click off, because they're lying. Um, yeah, um, put this in your hair, and in a week, you'll see two inches of growth. It's just not accurate, because like I just said in the beginning, everybody's uh, hair grows at different rates. So I just feel like all you have to do is put love into your hair, and it'll grow regardless. But but most importantly, be patient. Don't touch it, and, and, and watch your hair, you know, thrive and nourish and do what it's supposed to do. But with that being said, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in knowing like, you know, different hair products and stuff, then, you know, let me know down below. This is more catered towards hair growth and the tips that I've used that have really, really helped me grow my hair. But like I always say, if you're going to do anything, make sure you do it gracefully. Bye.